5.2 lecture will be similar to what we did yesterday, uh, or in 5.1, it's <clears throat> now what's called verifying. And you'll notice they put an equal sign. So they're telling you the two sides are equal, and you try to make one side look like the other. So uh, should learn a lot of the same stuff we learned yesterday. So if you remember, uh, this first page will be just some strategies. And the very first one is you can work with both sides of the equation. There's nothing wrong with that because it is an equation. But I find it easier to work on one side and stick with it until you get to the other side. Uh, and then also, we ask you that you circle the side that looks more complicated. And then that tells us what side you're going to work on. You can also look uh, for a chance, like factoring things. You could pull out common factors, or in this case, a difference of squares. So remember, right here is something squared minus a number. And so you can factor it into cosecant minus 1 cosecant plus 1, and that's all over 1 plus cosecant. And then remember, <clears throat> if you're going to cross things off, it has to be multiplied by that factor. So then this one, even though they're in different orders, this one right here and this one right here, whether it's 1 plus cosecant or cosecant plus 1, when you add, they're the same thing. It doesn't matter the order, so we can cross those off. And this would be cosecant of theta minus 1. So by doing a difference of squares factoring, you're able to uh, simplify. The next one, look for chances to substitute some of those identities in the box on the first page of the packet. So just a simple one might be, OK, we have sine of x and secant can be written 1 over cosine of x. And now I get sine of x over cosine of x. I multiplied. If you need to put that over 1, remember, multiply across the tops of the fractions, multiply across the bottom. And sine of x over cosine of x is tangent of x. Um, Strategy four is just talking about, sometimes you end up with trig, uh, these trig functions, equations with lots and lots of different trig functions in them. And sometimes just going to sines and cosines kind of makes things look more similar and you're not working with all kinds of different uh, trig identities. So for cosecant, again, I can do one over sine. And cotangent is, I'm going to switch colors, and cotangent is cosine of y over sine of y. And you'll run into this quite a bit. You have stacked fractions, and so now it's 1 over sine of y times the reciprocal of the green one. And then you can see there's a sine on the top and the bottom that are being multiplied. And you end up with 1 over cosine of y, which is secant. And then the last one is when you get to the exam, try something. Some students will start the problem two or three times before they find a pathway through it. And just because a teacher or somebody next to you does a problem a certain way doesn't mean that's the only way. You know, something shouldn't take 20 different simplifications, but if, if somebody does it in three and you did it differently, but you ended up doing five or something, that's fine. So just try something. And if it doesn't work, try something different. So these last two statements right here, very important. Try something. And if it doesn't go anywhere, try something else. Try a different tactic. Obviously, these get easier with practice. All right, so I'll circle this side. And it's similar to the one we just got done doing almost. I would change the top 
to 1 over sine. And the bottom would be 1 over cosine. And again, we have these stacked fractions. So I'm going to take the 1 over sine. And instead of dividing by 1 over cosine, I'm going to multiply by cosine over 1. And you'll notice when you multiply across the top, you get cosine of beta, sine of beta. And for a final answer, that would be our cotangent. And so remember, that's what we were looking for. All right. I probably would start here. And I have three different trig functions, not a big deal, but I'm going to change that tangent to sines and cosines. So that's cosine of x plus sine of x times, and here's the substitution I'm making. I'm going to do sine of x over cosine of x. And so what I have is cosine of x plus sine squared of x over cosine of x. And now this denominator is really a 1. So to get a common denominator, I need to take, I'm going to take this denominator and multiply it on top and on the bottom. So now I have cosine squared of x over cosine plus sine squared of x over cosine. So now my denominator is the same. And remember, if the denominator is the same, that nothing changes in the denominator now when you add them. And now you have a cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x. And the nice thing is, that's the number one Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And 1 over cosine is secant. That's what we were looking for. Example three was one of the first examples. Um, we talk about circling the more complicated side, and now we're going to actually do the problem. So I believe this is the more complicated side. So to do this, we have 1 over 1 minus sine of alpha plus 1 over 1 plus so what I'm going to do is take this denominator and multiply top and bottom over here. And I'm going to take this denominator and multiply it top and bottom over here. And the green and blue things, remember, are equal to 1. So now what I end up with is 1 plus sine of a over, actually I'm going to do this differently. If you look at these two denominators, they're the same. Let's go ahead and multiply them out to save some writing. So if you multiply them out, you end up with 1 minus sine squared of this alpha for a. And then this right here is just 1 plus sine of alpha there. And this turns out to be 1 minus sine of alpha there. So what's going to happen is the sine and negative sine go away, and I have 2 on top. And this is actually one of the rewrites for the number one Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If you move the sine to the other side, you have cosine squared left behind. So now you have this. And I can write that as 2 times 1 over cosine squared. And by doing that, I have 2 secant squared. which is what we are looking for. So I'm going to start with this side. Now one of the things that you can do for practice is to go ahead and 
watch how we do the problem one direction and then you could actually circle the other side and try it going backwards and if you can't you know maybe talk to your teacher see if there is a pathway but there should be one now on this one there are a bunch of secant squares and so some people might think um, you know Pythagorean identities and some people might see the top and think it's a difference of squares factoring so this is where you might try a couple of these things and see what's going on I'm actually going to do the Pythagorean identities and if you remember one of the identities is 1 plus tangent squared is equal to um, oops, secant squared of x so if you take the 1 to the other side it's secant squared minus 1 so I'm going to make that substitution on top so that becomes tangent squared of x on top and I still have my secant squared of x on the bottom. Now by doing that, um, I can do sine squared over cosine squared. And on the bottom, secant again is 1 over cosine squared of x. So stacked fractions again. You have sine of x squared, cosine squared of x here. And we're going to multiply by cosine squared of x over 1. And you can see that the cosines go away. And we're left with sine squared of x over 1, but you don't need over 1. And that's what we are looking for. All right. Uh, let's see what happens here. This one has definitely more terms, more complicated looking. And looking at it, some students might think pulling out a cosine because there's a common factor of cosine in each term. Try it, see what happens. I'm going to turn the secant into a cosine. So I have cosine of x and secant is 1 over cosine of x. And by doing that, when you multiply these two things together, you end up with cosine of x over cosine of x, which is 1 minus a cosine squared of x. And again, this is the number one Pythagorean identity. If you move sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, if you take that cosine to the other side, this is sine squared of x. And that's what we were looking for. All right, so that's the side, <clears throat> the number six, that I think we should start with. And if you kind of always keep one eye on the other side, what you'll notice is that we want, we want two cotangents at the end. Two cotangents at the end. Well, I already have a cotangent right there. So then I probably can switch that into another cotangent, so I have two of them. So let's see what happens. Cosecant is the same as 1 over sine. Secant is the same as 1 over cosine. And they're using theta as their variable. And remember, I already said that cosine over sine is already cotangent. So that's nice. Stacked fractions again. So 1 over sine times cosine. Cosine over 1. And so when you do this right here, you end up with cosine over sine. And that ends up being a cotangent also, which is two cotangents. And that's what we were looking for. All right, so uh, you're going to work on this next one. <clears throat> the only thing is the side that you pick might not be the same. So uh, just try it out, and then I'm going to put an answer up there for you to look at. So pause the video now.
Okay, so this is one answer. So we, we would have worked with this side right here. So I'll circle this side. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Different denominators. So to get them the same, I'm going to take the denominator, top and bottom. Take this denominator, top and bottom. When you do that, notice you have a sine, cosine, denominator in both of them. So that is the common denominator. Then you have a sine squared and a cosine squared, and when you add them together, that's the number one Pythagorean identity. So this whole thing on top turns into one. Now, these two things are multiplied. So if you split them up, we're still multiplying, and the number on top is one. So factor it. Well, that's only one and one. So you have one over sine, one over cosine, which is cosecant times secant, and that's what we are looking for. So that's only one example of how to do this, but practice makes perfect. All right, a um, couple of things here. You're using two Pythagorean identities, so I would start with this side over here. And one of the things you're going to notice is that the cosine squared minus 1 is kind of in the wrong direction. Um, there are different ways you can figure out what it is, but the answer is negative sine squared. So one of the easiest ways, you can go to the Pythagorean identity and write it out. Let's just write it out. Sine squared of x equals 1 minus cosine squared of x. That's the normal Pythagorean identity. To get it to flip-flop um, positions, we're going to multiply everything by negative 1. So now it becomes negative sine squared of x. The negative cosine becomes positive cosine squared, and the positive 1 becomes negative. So everything now has changed sign. You could also, another way to look at it, is to take your cosine squared of x minus 1 and replace this with 1 minus sine squared of x. Still have the negative 1 there, and now the 1 and negative 1 go away, and you're also left with negative sign. So 1 plus tangent squared, is, when you add, the order does not matter. So the first parentheses is still secant squared of x. That's the second Pythagorean identity. And this one we've looked is negative sine squared of x. And so when I look at these, this is 1 over cosine squared times negative sine squared over 1, and you end up with negative sine squared of x over cosine squared of x, and that simply is negative tangent squared of x. And that's what we were looking for. All right, so looking at the next DIY, there's that cosine squared minus 1. So you should know what that is. So let's go ahead and circle this side and then see if you can get it to work. So I would like you to pause the video now, come back and look at the solution. Okay, so remember this cosecant squared minus 1 is 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared is the normal Pythagorean or the first Pythagorean identity. So look at the first page, is the third one down, but this is how you start it. And if you move the one to the other side, that's it. So that's cotangent squared right there. We've already talked how you get negative sine squared. So cotangent is cosine over sine. So cosine squared over sine squared times a negative sine squared. So the sine squareds go away. Don't forget about the negative sign, so it's negative 1 times cosine, and that's what we were looking for. Okay, so the last one, I'm saying that one looks the most difficult. And we have a bunch of trig functions. So this is one of those I might do cosine of beta over sine of beta for the top fraction. And then when you do the bottom, you have 
1 over cosine minus sine over cosine. And so if you look at the two blue equations, they have a common denominator. So I didn't do anything with this one. But the blue one now is 1 minus sine on top over cosine of b, common denominator, on the bottom. So these are those stacked fractions again. So this one stays the same. But I'm multiplying by the blue one. So now the cosine goes on top. Now, nothing crosses off, so I'm just going to multiply. So now I have cosine squared of beta on top. And down on the bottom, I'm not going to distribute. I'm not going to distribute. I'm just going to write them next to each other. And so now the top of the fraction is cosine squared. So Pythagorean identity tells me 1 minus sine squared would be a substitution I can make. And so the nice thing about that is that the top factors into 1 plus sine of beta, 1 minus sine of beta, and I still have sine of beta 1 minus. So here you can clearly see that this is a factor and this is a factor being multiplied so you can cross them off and now you have 1 plus sine of b all over sine of b and we call this it's a heart break it apart we have two terms on top and only one on the bottom so now you have 1 over sine and sine over sine and so the final answer becomes cosecant plus 1. If you take that all the way to the beginning up here, that's what we're looking for.